Namaste and greetings. I, Ramit Arora, researcher at IMPRI, Impact and Policy Research Institute, Prabhav Evam Niti Anusandhan Sansthan, Nai Delhi, extend my warmest welcome to you all to IMPRI hashtag web policy talk. We are gathered today for a book discussion on singularities of municipal finance, hashtag city reflection, authored by Mr. Samir Unhale and published by IMPRI Books. Congratulations, sir. This discussion is organized by the hashtag IMPRI Center for Habitat, Urban and Regional Studies, CHURS, as part of IMPRI hashtag web policy talk book discussion series. I welcome all of you to this enlightening deliberation and thank you for tuning in to this discussion. Now let me introduce the esteemed gathering. Our chair for the session is Dr. Rumi Ajaz, Senior Fellow, ORF, Urban Policy Research Initiative, Observer Research Foundation, New Delhi. We welcome you, sir. We have the author of the book and speaker, Mr. Samir Unhale, Visiting Senior Fellow, IMPRI, Impact and Policy Research Institute, New Delhi, Joint Commissioner, Department of Municipal Administration, Government of Maharashtra, and Urban Practitioner. Welcome, sir. The distinguished panelists for the session are Professor Mahalia Chatterjee, Professor of Economics and Coordinator, Postgraduate Diploma in Urban Management and Planning, University of Calcutta. Dr. Purnima Chauhan, IAS Retired, Former Secretary, Government of Mahara Himachal Pradesh and Director, Himachal Pradesh Institute of Public Administration, HIPA. Dr. Somyadeep Chattopadhyay, Associate Professor, Economics, Vishwa Bharati Shanti Niketan, Visiting Senior Fellow, IMPRI, and Professor Shyamala Mani, Senior Advisor, WASH and Waste Management, CAH, Public Health Foundation of India, PHFI, former professor, National Institute of Urban Affairs, NIUA, New Delhi. Welcome to all. We look forward to learning from our esteemed gathering. Now, without any further ado, let us start the program. It is my honor and privilege to invite Dr. Rumi Ajazji to start the program with the chair's opening remarks. Over to you, sir. Thank you to the organizers and thank you, Ramath, for the very good introduction. Uh, as informed by the organizer, this program is on a book discussion, uh, the title of which you can see on the slide, Singularities of Municipal Finances. And this is in the context of India. It is authored by Mr. Samir Unhale, who has a who has vast experience uh, in the field of municipal administration, uh, including municipal finance, and uh, he is not only a practitioner. I would say, after uh, uh, participating in numerous discussions with him, I understand he has tremendous and great interest in research and in writing. Uh, he he frequently contributes to. Uh, to various uh, sources of information and uh, makes an attempt to uh, bring the grassroots knowledge uh, to be made available to a wider uh, community in the urban sector and in all other fields of development. And therefore, uh, uh, this title that he has cho chosen for today's uh, discussion is is very important in my understanding. And I'm sure all the panelists who are participating in the program would agree to this, that uh, when one thinks about municipal finance, uh, then uh, uh, immediately one is drawn towards uh, the condition witnessed in, in the cities and the towns of, of India. Uh, and uh, uh, as as we all know, as you know very well, more than me, uh, India is gradually urbanizing. Uh, slowly, there is a shift, demographic shift, that is observed from uh, from rural areas, from some small towns. People are moving in search of opportunities uh, to 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 where where those opportunities are available, and therefore cities are the prime and the main destination for uh, many of the 
of the people who who are who are uh, trying to improve their quality of life and when this demographic shift is occurring uh, uh, the the pressure is building on on the uh, institutions that are responsible for the governance of urban areas whether these are towns or cities uh, so uh, there are many projections and estimations by the census of india and by the united nations uh, who bring out world urbanization prospects about uh, india urbanizing faster than many other nations uh, and by 2050 around that time uh, about 50% of the country's population uh, would be uh, hopefully living in uh, areas designated as urban. Uh, so when this is the situation and this is where India is moving towards the responsibilities of agencies who exist in urban areas uh, becomes very important. And uh, they have to have adequate sources of funds and income and money to, to run uh, the urban areas in a desirable manner, which means uh, they should be in a position to offer a good quality of life, a better life to the citizens who are either migrants or who have been residing in these areas for, for years. Uh, one can uh, compare this situation of India with many other countries and cities of the global cities where uh, and if, when one talks about uh, developed economies, then uh, a contrast, a very striking contrast is visible in terms of the quality of life provided by city governments there and the quality of life provided by city governments in our part of the world. And this uh, happens uh, due to many reasons, including uh, the expertise of those who work in uh, institutions such as municipalities and, and uh, their financial condition in terms of uh, the projects that they identify, they're able to successfully implement and the master plans that are prepared. Uh, municipalities cannot work in isolation. They cannot be disconnected from various other entities that exist when uh, the development authorities say that this plan is to be implemented, many of the projects uh, come in the hands of the municipalities and therefore they have to be in a good position to be able to implement those plans effectively. One more thing I would say before inviting the uh, author to present his book is about the divided responsibilities that are witnessed in Indian cities. This means that municipalities are handling some tasks. And this is observed in some large urban centers of India, uh, not the smaller ones where it's mainly the munis municipality that is responsible for doing the work. Uh, there could be some parastatal organizations like what we see in Uttar Pradesh, like the uh, Jal Board, and even in Delhi Jal Board. And, and in smaller municipalities also I've, I've observed there are some parastatal organizations that are playing a role in terms of providing some services to the uh, citizens, but the responsibilities are divided uh, between the uh, urban local bodies, as these are popularly known, and parastatal entities like, in the case of Delhi, Delhi Jail Board, Delhi Development Authority, uh, and so on, New Delhi Municipal Council, etc. So. Uh, I would say that municipalities have still a lot in their hands uh, and the idea of national policy makers is to assign them with greater responsibilities. Efforts have been made in this direction for long, but they have limited responsibilities. Uh, but that also involves uh, having a lot of funds at disposal to do the work that they have been designated as per municipal acts. So uh, now moving further in discussion, I would say that uh, the topic chosen for today's discussion, enormous work, as you already know, has 
has been done. Enormous amount of knowledge has been documented on this topic in terms of the practices that are being followed by uh, municipal functionaries, uh, especially the finance departments within municipalities. The, the problems we all know, uh, the, the wide range of problems that exist in municipalities in terms of the finances, finances are concerned and the, the solutions. There is no dearth of knowledge and information and we are all familiar with the kind of interventions and innovations that are being introduced. Some successes have been achieved. We often hear about awards being given under the Smart Cities mission to certain municipalities who have shown good performance in financial administration, et cetera, whether it's revenue management, expenditure management, fiscal uh, decentralization, et cetera. But, uh, but uh, it is also true that a lot of work remains to be done. Then this book, which is being discussed today, covers a lot of so much ground. I've never seen, honestly, I've not seen uh, so many topics that have been discussed uh, under this topic of broad topic of municipal finance. Uh, and it is absolutely correct to bring in these various dimensions because the topics is so much interlinked with, with planning, with smart cities, with many of the urban missions that uh, the government of India has launched from time to time that you cannot discuss this topic in isolation. So I would like to congratulate the author for uh, I see it is a very significant contribution and invite the author to enlighten us with uh, the work that has been put on paper. I believe this is in draft form. Uh, there might be scope for improvement further, but this is the beginning of a discussion. And, and I also look forward to learning from our distinguished panel of uh, uh, speakers uh, who come from a varying backgrounds and have expertise in these matters to, to, to request them to, to add further knowledge, enrich this discussion further. So uh, Mr. Unale, uh, kindly uh, present your work. We look forward to hearing your, uh, your views on this topic. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rumi, sir. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, one of the, I think it was uh, important from uh, Impri side to encourage uh, a working person like me to, you know, collect whatever ideas he could gather because finding peace of mind in regular work is uh, a bit of challenge and uh, finding time again to type that into laptop also becomes uh, another challenge. But yes, thanks a lot for the motivation and support from all the Impri family, from you, Rumi, sir, from Sean, ma'am, you. Uh, the idea was what really uh, made me you know, think was that the municipal voices now also need to be registered in the larger urban uh, policy deliberations which are happening. Uh, so I was someone who has seen you know, municipalities for a longer time, I felt that the newer ideas which are coming, which are absolutely welcome and needs to be adopted, but some municipal perspective, some uh, some uh, information, data, knowledge that uh, gets accumulated knowingly, unknowingly over a period of time uh, needs to be made available uh, to the uh, larger community, to the researchers. And, you know, maybe uh, these various dimensions could also be uh, made available. Uh, secondly, I felt that the maybe uh, post 2015, when we have major missions happening, now, I mean, if you look at the uh, the interventions of the union government into the urban issues, uh, prior to 2005, uh, were very limited. In fact, even there was not even the finance commission funding was also not that way available to the municipalities uh, before the 74th amendment. And now, uh, I think the era of missions, uh, maybe from 2006, when we had the JNRM, and from 2015, we are having multiple missions, the uh, uh, significant funding that is now being made available into the larger uh, municipal issues. Uh, we, we see a you know, shift happening, and maybe the uh, views, ideas, uh, the experiences of the municipal and the municipal employees also, therefore, need to be shared. 
and in this uh, as sir had said there are a lot of you know interconnected issues uh, it's is very difficult to work only on a municipal finance part maybe the accounting part maybe the taxation part because now uh, we are finding so much of interconnections so at least getting them together because i mean i always said you know it is it is also uh, fairly uh, i mean i am not an uh, student of finance or political science so it was attempt of more of you know getting those ideas and those theories together probably uh, seeing the interconnections uh, into these various issues so was one of the uh, ideas which actually motives actually which uh, made me put him so uh, first was uh, what are the singularities of uh, municipal finance if one could you know the initial part of it Uh, many ask me why this word singularity. I mean, uh, singularities in mathematics has a different connotation. In um, black hole physics, has a different connotation. And but what the genre of uh, municipal finance is a bit different from the other uh, public finance, uh, maybe of the union or the state, and even the corporate finance, which is either in a profit oriented or a private sector uh, functioning. So the municipal issues are somewhere you know uh, in between these uh, various uh, uh, issue, uh, the discussions that happen about finance. So I felt that was the uh, uh, peculiarity and uh, the singular aspects of you know municipal finance. could be highlighted more and the title was more to uh, convey that uh, message that the uh, issues of municipal finance uh, will be very very special and it can't be you know compared or cut pasted from the other uh, issues like the union or state or the corporate so that was the reason actually we felt it could be done and uh, why is it so special is i felt you know because in public finance the union and the state dominate the entire Uh, discourse of uh, the public finance obviously uh, the sizes are huge and also the implications are there but uh, when we come down to city level to the municipal functioning we realize that the economy of the city may be very big but the money that gets to the municipality is also limited so i mean it's uh, just a guess Uh, being from Maharashtra, we always wondered what could be the GDP of the city of Mumbai, and uh, maybe the wealth that resides in Mumbai, and what uh, share of that actually the MCGM gets, despite the discussion that it is the one of the richest municipalities uh, maybe in this part of the world. So the uh, idea it was very interesting, you know. That's why uh, we did refer to some of the data published by the uh, Directorate of Statistics here. Uh, but there is no uh, single reference to Mumbai city per se, but to the revenue uh, nomenclature like districts and uh, tehsils. So I felt that you know, despite uh, the uh, significance, uh, even the government also needs to you know uh, capture and accept that the new urban realities are coming, and therefore uh, need to evolve from the only district and tehsil concept into probably the city region concept. and uh, the one of the again these are estimates as i say this is not exact because because the data is is is, uh, is to be extrapolated uh, the municipal share of the and uh, within the entire economy is very less so of course it has been uh, pointed out by various other reports also that it is hardly 1% uh, the fiscal imbalance probably is the word which economists would like to use uh, is uh, so uh, uh, skewed that if maybe 100 rupees is collected in view of taxes by either level of governments or all the governments then what the municipalities gets is maybe less than 1% and then when we are expecting the municipalities to you know deliver stand up to the challenges and what we did the traditional municipality functioning and what now we are expecting anticipating to happen in maybe next two or three decades uh, the challenges which the cities will have to face it could uh, maybe a slight trailer or a slight you know glimpse we had in the covid in which uh, the the scale of the uh, functioning was uh, the scale of impact you know was so was so so severe and the cities really had to work a lot you know to stand up to the challenges and maybe uh, you know we are expecting greater intensity greater frequency of you know extreme weather events or that kind of scenario the economic impacts the general geopolitical uncertainties 
So those cities will have the, the new challenges, new technologies which are coming, maybe in data, IT, and th those things. So uh, the traditional municipal functioning, maybe till nine, 2020, and maybe what the cities will have to face in 2030, 2040, 2050, will be, at, I believe, a very different uh, genre of issues the cities will have to be, will be facing. And then we really need to uh, make the municipalities uh, really... Uh, <laughs> Uh, stand up to the changes and all of those issues are really important. One, of course, is the capacity building of the people, the staffing rules, maybe the general uh, and personal management or uh, establishment as we in Clergdom uh, choose to call it. These issues and second, of course, is finance, the availability of funds, resources, because after all money is, I believe, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a quantification of the social power. GDP is essentially a social power that the community has. It is just a quantification of you know that that, that abstract concept of uh, social power that the community possesses or the nation possesses, which can be put into uh, use societally. So uh, first of all, of course, for the fiscal imbalance. Secondly, I have found that many deliberations uh, chose only a limited part of you know, improving property tax. Of course, uh, that's the only tax actually, which is available with the municipalities now. And all attempts of improving the property tax are always uh, will always be required. However, the broader over overview, a synthesizing overview of the municipal you know functioning and the relevances of finances for deliverables, I think is very important. And therefore, I felt uh, many times uh, a focused discussion happens on the uh, many such issues. But a synthesizing effort probably uh, could be needs to be developed further. So this was just a very, very initial, very, if I may say, a very amateurish attempt, really speaking, to get those ideas together, which uh, felt, you know, related with this thing. Secondly, I mean, um, uh, this is being initial, but I will be more interested in knowing uh, our experts, you know, so I will uh, cut my, uh, this basic introduction uh, a bit short. Third, I felt was the manpower issue, the vis-a-vis uh, -vis the financial uh, uh, functions of the municipalities are concerned. Of course, it's very difficult to have a single statement regarding the municipal, you know, the scenario in India because there are almost five thousand municipalities in India now, and maybe after the post uh, next census when the figures will come up. Probably it uh, will, will, no one need to be surprised if the figures jumps up maybe fifty or sixty percent. That the number of municipalities that will come in, and therefore the uh, function, the municipal functioning, the financial uh, aspects of the municipal functioning. It may be accounting, auditing. A lot of new technologies coming. But then the manpower part uh, to get with the municipalities, especially remoter municipalities, weaker municipalities, maybe you know the <clears throat> will be very, very crucial. And uh, all the efforts that we are trying to put in the tremendous uh, funding, of course, has jumped a lot. I mean, as I was uh, going through it, I found that from 2021 to 2026, 20, almost 8 trillion rupees in view of allocations are being made available into, into the, uh, the urban sector, which I believe was uh, really a huge jump into what was probably uh, two decades back, all the allocation put together. So the manpower issue is going to be very important. And when we expect people to join the municipal service, and if they won't be getting a career progression, or career, you know, career growth into them, so it's going to be difficult to attract uh, good manpower into the municipal functioning. Uh, the uh, focus of uh, people working in government can change, but people, very few people choose to join municipalities. So what could be the options to, you know, get the good manpower uh, within the municipal, within the finance sector to do their time to municipalities is also an issue. So uh, we, I shared an experience, an experience which uh, was also has been done in other parts of the country also of having a statewide cadre of accountants and auditors for municipalities which work uh, for the uh, municipality and greater uh, capacity building and greater higher end training that needs to be given regularly to our municipal staff of course that is also being made a part uh, the 15th finance after the 15th finance commission we are seeing a lot of portalization of data i think which was also a new trend uh, which we are seeing in last two three years that all the reports of the all municipalities uh, at least for last two, three years 
are being put up into a portal. Uh, they are, of course, there might be issues of uh, progressively cleaning the data and getting it you know, on the same benchmark. But I think the initiative is uh, going to be a great boon for uh, all the people who are interested in uh, municipal um, finance. All the data are being, being the, the uh, budgets are to be uploaded, the property tax is being uploaded into that. And I think there's a huge treasure of uh, municipal finance data that will be available into the 15 city finance portal. And uh, the way it is, uh, I, I think it, it needs to be made available as early as possible to the academicians and the research and think tanks you know, so they can work on to it. So uh, generally looking about the uh, municipal finance, A, the sub-sovereign status, B, limited you know, uh, taxation powers uh, to the municipalities, three, uh, greater control of the state governments, even municipal finance. Uh, fourthly, the newer options like you know, property, uh, property land monetization. Maybe the municipal bond is being discussed a lot, but uh, if we had to make the municipalities work for municipal bond, so how would be the, how to make it happen? So we all agree with why issue the challenge is now how to make happen if we want the municipal bonds to function what actually needs to be done and when we are thinking it can't be only for two three big cities or maybe two three bigger states the challenge is scale the challenge is speed if we want to make something happen we need to make it happen to all the 5000 municipalities and the time if we are to make it happen make it happen in maybe uh, two months or five months and not for decades together so i think this is a challenge also to the municipal administration that the scale and the speed the acceleration and adoption of new technology, which is emerging very, very fast, like the double entry accounting system, uh, as vis-a-vis -vis the single entry accounting, which uh, almost for 20 years uh, is being tried. Now, uh, the utilities, <coughs> the, the, the utility of these ideas also needs to reach to the citizens. We need to communicate uh, more often, more frequently to the citizens as to what exactly municipal finances and we need to get the citizens not only participation or engagement once in the budget but this free flow of open data of you know how the municipalities functions how is the municipality functioning what are the finances needs to be done more frequently to the citizens that was another point i felt uh, which needs to be uh, also emphasized that uh, it can't be a black box you know because uh, as we always see that uh, uh, citizen in uh, india is uh, voter once in five years, a taxpayer once a year, and then complain on the rest of the duration. So that needs to change. And uh, municipalities will have to be more forthcoming with the financial data. They need to be, you know, th that's why uh, I think the urban conclave is happening on 31st of October now. And a lot of focus is being put into, you know, open data and, you know, real-time city management. And if the trust of the citizens on municipalities I mean, uh, the challenges of, you know, the ethical dilemmas was the last chapter I felt could have been uh, discussed because uh, the perception of the people, the taxpayers, regarding the ethical functioning of municipalities, municipal finance, is also going to be an important, you know, drive whether citizens are going to be forthcoming in paying their taxes, A, and B, whether the higher level of governments will be comfortable on giving major financial decision-making powers like property tax and bond to the municipalities if the perception challenge, as some say, or as others allege otherwise, uh, is not tackled. So I think that ethical and moral elements in municipal finance are also equally important. Uh, and they do face the various elements of you know the competitive electoral politics or otherwise. But connecting with the citizens for financial accountability I think uh, also is very crucial if we have to get people convinced that yes, the money they pay to municipalities will be put in in the best way uh, for the benefits of the citizen. And of course, there are certain design issues of processes as to how new technology needs to be adopted, as to how you know the training needs to happen. And also most importantly, that we need to involve the political, local political leadership in everything that we want to do in municipalities. Because sometimes that tend happens that we tend to, you know, uh, it is either uh, more, uh, you know, maybe it's a technocratic or more bureaucratic or techno managerial emphasis uh, becomes more into the emerging fields and the local political leadership somewhere feels left behind. And I think that uh, needs to be uh, changed. I believe we need to involve the local political leadership <clears throat> very closely into all the new emerging uh, issues which are coming up. 
or the ability to you know convince the citizen does lies with the local political leadership and therefore one needs to uh, convince or co convey if not convince the ideas into the languages the local languages into the the, the, the terminology with, with the local uh, leadership you know would be understanding and i believe uh, connecting the citizens connecting the local political leadership uh, is also equally important part of you know if we have to improve the uh, issues related with uh, municipal finance and yes the urban system of india is one of the biggest i think uh, we will be having half more than half a billion people would be staying in the cities of india maybe now or maybe very soon uh, the number of municipalities probably would be going to 7 8 thousands and you know these contexts i believe uh, the uh, challenges are very much and uh, we will need to have greater such collaborations I know, so that the idea is sharing is done and the municipal accountants also need to be given a pivotal role in anything that we are trying to do in municipal finance or, or the bigger newer idea that is coming. So Rumi sir, I think uh, I probably exceeded, <laughs> exceeded my uh, time, but the idea was just to uh, give a brief outline as to why uh, this happened and also uh, to thank to the Imperi family of you, Chawan ma'am, uh, Professor ma'am, you know, to trying to get uh, uh, these ideas uh, onto book or organize them maybe uh, somewhat and share. So thanks a lot for the opportunity and uh, thank you for giving me a patient hearing. So thank you, sir. Yeah, th thank you, Mr. Ronale. That was uh, sharing of very good ideas. Uh, I I think I you you have touched upon some very important points that uh, India has to consider as we are moving ahead in time uh, in terms of what all things to be are to be taken into consideration to address the requirements of of the citizens and I think the best point uh, was about connecting with the citizens. Uh, you are absolutely right in saying uh, I have visited some places where citizens, especially those belonging to the poor communities, they, they say that uh, nobody comes from the municipality unless there is an election. So, so uh, time has come for, for the administration to take into account these uh, concerns of the citizens and, and do justice with the citizens because uh, this is what they are working for for the welfare of the society. And so uh, the points that you mentioned are very interesting. Uh, they call for great deliberations. I'm sure the panel of speakers who are present here would like to throw some light on those points and share their personal uh, experiences. And uh, I would like to thank you once again and uh, move on with the program ahead uh, to, to invite uh, Dr. Purnima Chauhan, uh, I think it will be good to get a perspective from her side. She has worked in uh, at very important positions in the government, and I'm sure uh, this work and the experience that she has gained over the years uh, would, would uh, educate, enlighten all those who are participating in the program. Over to you, ma'am. Dr. Purnima Chauhan. Thank you, Dr. Ajaz. Uh, I am seeking enlightenment here. Let me put that across straight away. And uh, since last night, I have been going through this fascinating book. And Unhale ji, congratulations to you that in less than 100 pages, you could cover the kaleidoscope of issues which are related to this very, very tough subject, which is like a matrix. It is even more difficult than the film matrix. But let me, let me say that at the outset that I think globally we know that the world exists at the bottom of the pyramid at the third level. Unfortunately, whether, you know, the triple bottom line should be there. In India, I feel that we are still struggling. And that you very eloquently said yourself that we are struggling for a number of reasons. And I'm not an expert. Let me say that at the outset. It is sheer interest because when I was handed this department in 36 years, perhaps this was the most challenging, along, along with the town and country planning. And perhaps that's why in the year 2010-11, there were no takers for this. 
nobody wanted this department urban development and i'm saying this honestly and i also said oh my god what a crown of thorns and when the, when i went to actually thank the chief secretary i didn't know whether so she sympathized with me she told me that look what i have given you is tcp town and country planning and the urban development and she also added as a um, side this thing comment that the minister is even more tough so you have your hands full and i had another department to go with it and i know how difficult it was to get around to understanding and the cross cutting complexities of even things like rent seeking at the staff level and the kind of interest and the kind of multiple schemes multiplicity of schemes it was a it was a maze that perhaps should be put into as an examination question for the civil services and that is what and tcp still is struggling with town and country planning fortunately i think these two departments are combined in many states not in himachal so at the outset i'll say when you're planning um, development urban development and if the spatial planning area is wider which normally it is than the urban area and there are different norms over there in the out periphery and different norms in the urban area you can imagine what a citizen goes through is he getting his planning approvals on the periphery when there is no clear cut demarcation between what lies in a peri urban area where does the line stop so there is ample scope for rent seeking corruption and we are not even going to talk about that because here we are talking of capacities we are talking of funds being developed the three f's out of which you know funds functions and functionaries the funds is the most vague and uh, um, probably the battleground that we are talking about over here so congratulations to you for having captured so many nuances that you have even gone ahead and i must say you've done a fantastic chapter on um data analytics ai and the climate change imperatives and we have just seen in a number of mountains range my only regret and i will place the regrets in the beginning only that perhaps you could add a chapter on mountain issues because when we talk of onm you know recoveries user charges and other things i have grappled with this issue i remember being given a task by the ngt that why don't you adopt the punjab model now ngt is sitting right up there that for solid waste management tum log punjab ka model kyun nahi adopt kar lete i missed a beat i said punjab and himachal are geographically totally different entities totally different populations uh, look at the dead mileage that a truck a solid waste management truck has to encounter the vehicles have they no idea and they're passing orders i hope i don't face contempt for saying that but the point is that it did put it down in my report that we had out of all the then i went on this visit and i examined those entities and they were linear and you will understand straight away being a expert practitioner and uh, you know having done so much of in depth research that when you have a linear system and you have dead mileage coming back your costs automatically double and the kind of the kind of quantities that we are dealing with you need a cluster approach but these are not circular cl clusters these are linear clusters and i was very very happy when i came to the end you all must be knowing where is manali if you haven't please come and visit us be my guest in manali i came across one of my executive officers and hats off to him i quote him in every seminar because brilliance is very hard to find this was a man who in a popular international destination like manali along the road had a very very small area as a landfill very small area and you know landfills get filled up so easily because it is not that we have large population but we have like shimla with what 3 lakh municipal population has 25 lakh tourist population floating population now if, look at the ratio it speaks for itself and himachal as a, as a whole as a 1 is to 3 ratio of uh, local to tourist population you know so having said all that and manali is round the your destination this man had a very small area bias river if you've been to manali this side of the bias river was his area beyond the bias river where all the huge hotels by all the political personalities also were hugely there with very little regulation almost none and throwing their waste and sewage into the bias river now this man was perturbed instead of closing his eyes to this issue he went about innovatively and what he did was remarkable he decided that he doesn't have the gun to shoot these people he caught hold of the 
pollution control board guy, his counterpart, who whose jurisdiction went beyond the Vyas River to those hotels. So he said, come with me and we will give them a proposition. Then listen, we are going to chalan you and a heavy chalan if you do what you're doing. But in case you decide, we will work out a formula that we will charge you fees, solid waste fees for not chucking. We will collect, a truck will come and collect, but you will pay at the rate of, this is a pro rata rate he worked out, that one day's full tariff. So if you have 100 rooms, what is your one day's full tariff? That is what you will give. So, you know, uh, as a pro rata proportionate mechanism, it worked very well for all the hotels. And they managed to get them to agree. So these two guys together with differing jurisdictions managed to make sure not just that they imposed a rate, stop this illegal uh, throwing of garbage and sewage into the river and polluting it. They also managed to create a circular mechanism for the truck. And they also managed in that one circle <clears throat> to collect optimal garbage. So that was one, they use the resource. So the whole issue is of optimal resource utilization for better governance and for cost recovery. So if one has got that straight, I think anybody who has applied his mind to any project will agree that innovation lies in the detail. And this is where, so this guy, he did one innovation, he didn't stop over there. So whatever garbage was coming to him now, he put it into that tiny little landfill. He ensured that for 10 years, this was being filled. The inert material, when it filled up, he was not getting any more land. There is no land in Himachal to give, and especially for landfill, nobody wants them. So what he did, he decided that PWD, a third partner that he got, PWD was trying to put embankments along the Vyas River. So what this man did, he said, okay, you have to fill these embankments. You're reclaiming land. So why do you want to get material? I'll give you my inert material. He used their JCB. He dug out his 10-year-old inert material, put it into those embankments. They had created the hollows over there, free of cost. And he actually reused his own landfill. And in the meantime, when those 10 years were happening, he never allowed any you know, methane gas to you know, escape from there. He made sure. And when I asked him, I said, how come I've gone to four or five other municipalities and they're all failures? How, is, how have you done all of this? And very humbly, he says, Madam, I've just used the Municipal Solid Waste Rules 2000. That was his humble reply. He never said that he's done something dramatic. So that is why his name is Mohinder and he deserves a comment. So that is the kind of person with passion and dedication. If every municipality had it, they would get around many of the capacity problems, many of the understanding of the laws. So that is one issue. The second issue, and I'm not coming directly to the finances. You've done a damn good job of it. The thing is, one, of course, you mentioned that the GST has subsumed so many taxes and there is no mechanism of sharing. So there is a suggestion in another report which says that one-sixth, perhaps, that's a very high level, but central government should think of, you know, devolving that much of money to the municipality. After all, the government also recognizes if they have an urban uh, development fund, now infrastructure development fund, they know that where does development lie in the future? At the bottom of the pyramid, in the tier two and three cities. So what are we looking at? We have to share taxes. If not today, tomorrow, they'll have to do it. Central government will have to think of it. So why not work out a non-acrimonious model in which we can do it, have partnerships and do it. And the two or three other things, one, capacity building of the municipalities. Of course, Maharashtra must be having people who are really aware. Look at the budget. Sorry. Sorry, is that for me? No, uh, one of the panelists' mic is on, so that's okay. why the disturbance happened. Please continue. Okay. So capacity building has been a challenge, and why I'm saying all these things is this: is, I'm speaking from a mountain perspective. It may not exist in larger municipalities, so pardon my saying so, but I think it could find mention. Cantonment boards is another one. In Himachal, we have many of them. I don't know if I find any mention of those in the book. But contournement boards are very well managed. Kasoli is one such example where government is now looking at that well-managed contournement board where there is a entry tax and they're saying how they can encroach or you know invade that. And the army is up in arms because they have managed it so, for so many years and so well. But then they impose the law strictly. There is something called rule of law. And this is exactly what I saw when I went to England for a year for my master's. And I said, oh my God, how come I'm not looking for an SDM or a DC or a municipal commissioner for 
any kind uh, first of all i didn't have any grievances i was going abroad for the first time i was totally at sea i didn't know how to use a computer even then i learned but even then i for all my needs including trying to teach a british or hindi even for that i had to go only go to the library everything was provided in leaflets at that time now everything is online i didn't i even got a hindi kaida from there to teach this man who already knew hindi actually he was in love with india so what i'm trying to say is i never had to look for anything beyond the municipal level to redress my grievances that is the india that we're looking for that is the kind of governance and local accountability that is built on trust and trust is exactly what you just flagged the devolution of fund the lack of devolution the mysterious ways and where does the tax go the non transparency doesn't breed trust at all in any citizen here right here where i'm staying in aldera i'm staying in a rural area post retirement we are grappling with the issue of solid waste management here and there are the who's who who are staying around us and wanting to contribute something one person is contributing 15 lakhs i said bhai itna paisa hai tumhare paas ek individual he happens to be somebody you all would know so what i'm trying to say is i told him i said listen don't spoil this uh, panchayat over here they will see 15 lakhs and th yeah, their mouth will be watering okay let's you want to pool the funds let's put it into a corpus but because they think you know wet waste can be managed by just buying a machine i said no please understand this whole process has to be seen end to end so if educated enlightened world traveled people can think like this god help us what about the people who are actually at the grassroots the vegetable vendors who are generating that wet waste and other are they willing to adopt those schemes so capacity building training i came across huge issues there was no plan to build capacities for any of the elected representatives i organized that got them to go and then the women who were elected and more than 50% against a 50% quota get elected in himachal they even occupy the general seats they said madam we have not gone beyond our districts we can't go to chandigarh for training i said take your husband we'll pay for it and that is the first taste they had of what was their role playing so how can you expect results from people who don't know what they're entitled to do so that is another gray area in which of course we can do a lot more because you know as we know we are going to reach 50% urbanization very very soon we we are going to have imperatives of understanding not simply accrual accounting but accounting which is almost a stern system of accounting which involves environmental impacts also if we can't even do accrual accounting how can we go to green accounting now that is a very large trajectory to to that is a very large bridge that we'll have to create and that is affecting everybody but i really don't know you have captured um, somewhere the gender issues also i feel we could have elaborated a little more and then of course while there is another area which is i'm very passionate about and niti ayog has recently pani mein niti ayog has recently recognized that raw materials which can be used by this is by all levels of governance not just the municipalities uh, culture culture is a resource tangible and intangible resources for many purposes for um, you know in congested areas of himachal i had developed a scheme as secretary culture which is called aaj purani rahon se apursa for dispersal of tourism without losing the revenues disperse it to all the areas and move it away from congested areas like shimla dharamshala and manali which are bursting at the seams and killing the goose that lays the golden egg so culture is an area which is not tapped leveraged at the moment we could look at that area and of course it gives every destination a flavor of its own and a rigor of a multi sectoral research into uh, municipal financing is very evident in your work and somewhere i feel uh, while you're finalizing the book your case studies are so interesting if they could come in a tabular form and the explanations come below they will catch the eye that is one thing and it was very interesting also that uh, and they would be very good reference materials so you have mentioned you know foreign examples and others and as far as uh, uh, onm recovery goes yes um, and as far as reform goes as a patchwork i always felt in jnnurm and fortunately i was director of urban development at that time that it was very project oriented and i remember that time my secretary and myself we worked 
you to uh, present a project to the Asian Development Bank where we work with the municipalities to make them understand what is reform. In other words, process, output, outcome. They have to see what is the outcome they need. Now, where did this idea come from? Uh, I think SLBs, service level benchmarks, which exist and we started from Karnataka in the sanitation sectors, four of them with indicators and benchmarks. The architecture was fantastic. The 13th Finance Commission was great that it imposed it upon all municipalities except Nagar Panchayats. Now that architecture, where is it? It was fantastic. Today, if you want to develop it again, you come across, you will develop the same thing again. It was perfect. Now that kind of rigor, that kind of vertical capture of data to uh, so that it cannot be gamed by anybody. That is the kind, we can use our AI, we can use our um, data analytics to be able to analyze where are we, where do we want to be. And then the municipality can come up with resolutions which are realistic. So SLBs also required them to have three-year projections and a vision. So when we worked on this project, we have 700 crore project we were going to give to the ADB. We worked to make sure that the moment a municipality takes a decision to do a certain reform, a percentage of the incentive fund will flow to them there. Next, when they sign an agreement with the project implementation unit to get their services, a part of the fund will flow to them. So it was an overarching umbrella of reform. Projects were only need-based. Whereas JNNURM unfortunately became a project-oriented exercise and reform was, you know, that you post a stamp on it, you the reform ki stamp laga di aur bej diya government of India ko. UC laga ke. That is not what is required in a dynamic environment where people are crying for change, especially when they can see how systems function in other countries and function much better. And I have seen that in Japan, when we went to see their uh, water util utilization plant, their water quality plant, they were actually treating the entire water supply to the extent that it was portable. Even from the toilets, you could drink water. And that is true of any country in the West. Canada, I just came back from Toronto. You can drink the water from the loo. At Frankfurt and Munich airports, you could drink the water from the loo. So what I'm saying is, what is the cost of doing that? I asked in Japan. They said, well, the cost is high. I said, then why are you doing this? Portable water is only 10% of the total need. Baki ko aapko itna clean karne ki zarurat kyun hai? They said, no. We have to clean because there's leakage. The health outcomes, externalities can be very negative. Then I understood that there is an insurance involved. You see, the insurance companies will never cover their health insurances in case there is even that 1% chance of leakage. They don't take that chance because, and then how do they incentivize it? So the hotel we were staying in, they were buying that expensive water only for the 10% use. All the gray and black water, they were recycling in the backyard. So instead of buying all the water needs, there was an incentive that you establish a plant. So there are a number of examples where, you know, these countries have grappled with these issues. Uh, Sweden you know, the CSAV solid waste management plant is actually functioning at 98% capacity utilization and still looking glum that we are not working at 100%. They're buying all the solid waste from all of Europe and converting wet and dry waste and supplying. And when I went to remote areas there, the households knew that this is coming from the, the heating is coming from the wet, wet waste. And what is the dry waste going for? The citizens knew it. That is the level of participation. There is vertical participation from the municipal level to the top level for even policy planning and implementation and the very critical one word feedback. The feedback loop is so important. And so having said that, that this exists in this world on this planet, we just have to have smaller regions. Stockholm, what does it do? It has regional planning. You also have mentioned regional planning when you talk of Maharashtra. Now, in regional planning, what are they doing? They have a lovely place called, they have a region called Gotland in which there is Stockholm also as a city. And they have Visby Island, which is a UNESCO World Heritage. It has old heritage over there. It also has about 80% forest cover. They don't want to lose that. But that is not profitable. Maintaining that is not profitable. So what they have done is they try to encourage conferences and other things to happen in Visby Island, festivals and other things. And offices have opened up in Visby Island so that it is being used commercially. 
but with a carrying capacity imperative that so many people and no more so that the forest is not lost. So even then they make losses. Who subsidizes them? The cross subsidy is coming from the huge revenues of Stockholm because this is one region. So when the region makes this budget, they are cross subsidizing. So these are examples which we can use to make sure that the sustainable development goals, overarching goal of leaving no one behind. We don't leave regions behind. We don't leave municipalities behind. We don't leave the endemically impo impoverished urban people behind. Sathi haat badhana. Ek akela thak jayega, milkar boj uthana. So fundamentally, you know, what I felt is a fantastic cluster approach possibility exists. You know, this culture, uh, leveraging of culture as a resource exists and also to give the destination. You know, when you go across the world, you're not looking at tourism sites everywhere. You're just looking at the fantastic systems that take you from place A to place B. You're looking at transparency in dealing and you become, you as a visitor are impressed and you come back wanting more. That is the kind of India. That is the kind of, and we have so much of heritage. We have so much to give. It's just that the systems need improvement. And of course, you have flagged issues of ONM. We are not recovering those also. GST is a very important concern. And of course, training, capacity building, learning from outside, but not replicating blindly, customizing the replication. So I'm sure I'm out of time. So I think I'll um, end it over here. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And Samir ji, Hats off to you for having come off this. Thank you, Dr. Chauhan. It was very, it was a pleasure to listen to your vast and rich experience. And I think the, the, your, uh, your points about the innovations that are observed in different regions of India need to be understood and applied appropriately. Uh, the India uh, displays a lot of diversity. And uh, you cannot apply uh, the same model uniformly to all the yeah, municipalities. One size, size fits all will never work in this country, even in this in one state. Even in one state. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it was a pleasure listening to you, and I'm sure uh, the author would have uh, got many ideas based on the experience that you have shared. Uh, since you gave. Uh, so many examples of waste management. It's it's a very important responsibility of a municipality, uh, and uh, uh, the the kind of innovations that you observed, experienced during your work in 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 the state of Himachal Pradesh are great lessons for everybody. Uh, I'm sure uh, some of this work uh, it should be documented if it has not been done, so that I people hope to understand. Do that with the help of Impri. <laughs> <laughs> yes, certainly it should be done. No, thank because you. These... And, and I really regard the kind of work that Impri is doing and the kind of practitioners you bring. I definitely learn and look forward to learning from them. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, I would like to now move forward in the discussion. Mr. Ronale, I'll just come back to you to respond to, to your, your reactions on, on uh, the, the messages given by Dr. Chauhan. But since uh, solid waste management was discussed a lot, I would like to uh, invite Dr. Professor Shamla Mani, who has considerable experience in this sector. It's an important duty of a municipality. It's one of the most important uh, resp uh, responsibility on which a lot of finance uh, is spent. A lot of money is needed to uh, handle this responsibility efficiently. So over to you, Professor Shamla Mani, for your comments. We look forward to hearing you. Thank you so much, Dr. Ajaz. Uh, it was wonderful listening to uh, Mr. Unale and also Dr. Purnima Chauhan. Um, yes, uh, I'm really the odd man out here because uh, I'm basically an environmental scientist and uh, working in the area of solid waste management and sanitation. I have been a professor at the National Institute of Urban Affairs, and uh, I've been involved very closely with the Sol uh, Swachh Bharat mission, uh, especially the capacity building uh, 1.0. So, and continue to do uh, a lot of work in the country for solid waste management and sanitation. So, um, yes, uh, you would think that, you know, how am I concerned with uh, municipal finance? 
But that is really very, very true that just like how uh, Dr. Johan mentioned, uh, you know, uh, I am looking at it from the side of, uh, like uh, Dr. Ajah said, what is it that is required? I mean, you know, and uh, how are we placed, especially in terms of, uh, you know, such an important function, two functions of the uh, municipality, which is, uh, uh, you know, absolutely inherent with its uh, existence. And uh, we find that uh, we are completely out of pocket whenever we talk of these two uh, very, very important functions. One is that, uh, you know, I must congratulate uh, Mr. Unale. I think you've done an excellent job. The book is, uh, like uh, Dr. Johan said, within 100 pages, and it's got so much of uh, information and insight. And uh, that comes from, you know, your experience, and uh, especially because you are uh, right there in the middle of it all, so to say. But uh, in this, uh, I would also say that, like you said, uh, you know, there are over five, almost 5,000 municipalities, uh, yeah, municipalities, urban local bodies now, but it's going to be 8,000. Everybody knows that, uh, uh, you know, some of the census towns are slowly moving towards uh, the urban lo local body structure. And, uh, you know, very soon, uh, like uh, Dr. Chauhan mentioned, we are also going to become 50%, uh, uh, you know, urban. Also, it is a, a very, very visible part of uh, India. I mean, like, you know, whether you have elections or whether, you know, a dignitary is visiting or, uh, you know, you, you see anything happening. It is, uh, you know, the focus is uh, urban. So even when there are floods and disasters, although, of course, you know, as Dr. Johan said, that, uh, you know, uh, mountain uh, states uh, uh, are severely affected. But, uh, you know, when something happens in, in a big city uh, and uh, people are uh, either drowning or, uh, you know, are uh, affected by a cyclone or any of these things, uh, it comes into focus. So I think we really need to put uh, things in order. One of the things uh, which you have also mentioned, uh, Mr. Onale, and uh, it has been pointed out uh, so many times that the revenue... Uh, uh, you know, from uh, various taxes and all that, it's barely meeting about 50% in a state, in even, you know, in states which are uh, so well off, you know, where your uh, per capita GDP is so high. So you can imagine, uh, you know, there are uh, states where, and uh, urban local bodies where the, um, uh, you know, revenue collected through taxes is not even reaching the 50%. So uh, even though we keep talking about the third tier of the constitution and the govern governance, uh, we find that, uh, uh, you know, there is really uh, not uh, enough uh, resources, either with the, um, you know, the, uh, the urban local body itself, or, uh, you know, even if you put quite a lot of uh, emphasis collecting, uh, you know, like making the a bulk waste generator, like how Dr. Chauhan gave the examples of hotels and uh, big restaurants, it is really not uh, sufficient. So uh, it is, uh, this is something, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, the Swachh Bharat mission, even you have mentioned in your book, uh, you know, several hundred crores have been uh, allocated for both sanitation through uh, Jal Shakti also and through uh, Swachh Bharat Mission. But the way to access, uh, you know, the, the untied funds are so less in the 15th Finance Commission that there are so many small urban local bodies which struggle, you know, to meet the conditions and really are finding it very difficult to access, uh, you know, especially for capital uh, expenditure. And of course, uh, everybody knows what are the angst of the uh, urban local bodies and municipalities for meeting their uh, O&M uh, expenditure. is a very well-known fact that even if you take just one sector like solid waste management, that the, uh, you know, almost 70, 80% is uh, just on salaries and you know consumables and things like that. So, of course, uh, Johan mentioned the solid waste management rules 2016. Madam, if he is following Mohin, you can please tell him that it is updated and 
Uh, in fact, in Solid Waste Management Rules 2016, we don't even recognize landfills. Landfills, you know, were finance commissions of the previous, uh, you know, uh, uh, previous systems. Uh, but now we are saying that, you know, wet waste should not even reach the landfills. Wet waste has to be composted or converted to biogas uh, either, uh, you know, within the uh, city or the community or and in fact, uh, the in fact the methane debate has gone up now. COP twenty will not even get another chance if we don't do something very strictly about this. And also from the sewage and uh, underground drainage, you know, they all contribute to the methane. So coming back to the actual financial aspect, um, you know. Um, I would also like to represent from the, you know, after my retirement, I've also been trying to help my own community, uh, you know, trying to meet uh, uh, some of the challenges. And um, uh, of course, we are here in Delhi trying to work with the MCD, uh, you know, and trying to uh, uh, fulfill the requirements of the SWM rules uh, and sanitation rules. And you would be surprised that uh, it's not only the taxes, sir, that, uh, you know, uh, that a citizen pays. Uh, you know, as a member of the RWA in Delhi, in fact, all the RWAs are registered RWAs. They are, we are registered entities. And we are also bulk waste generators because many of us are in gated communities. So when we manage our RWAs, actually we are doing, uh, you know, and the MCD is aware of it. Our urban local body is very much aware of it. They are actually doing uh, the work of what was envisaged in the 74th Amendment as uh, you can say a sub mohalla committee or something like that. And, you know, we, we spend a lot of money. We spend a lot of money, uh, to, you know, contributing to maintaining uh, even sewage, underground, uh, you know, sewage, drainage, um, you know, even the uh, so to a certain extent uh, within locality, uh, whatever the expenditure that is required uh, towards the maintenance of street lights and roads and security and uh, various other things, of course, also solid waste management, door to door collection and all that. So uh, when, uh, you know, something like this comes that, you know, you have to, as a bulk waste generator, you have to invest in uh, either structures for uh, uh, composting or, uh, you know, whatever the other thing is, or for the dry waste, uh, you know, uh, storing and giving and all that, um, we found that, uh, you know, this is another added uh, expenditure from the citizen side. Our ULB has been extremely helpful. We have been uh, very much working with the ULB, but despite that, what we are finding is that, uh, uh, you know, grants are not available at all. We could not access. I mean, I was on the other side talking about Swachh Bharat Mission and the funds and the grants. But I myself realized that uh, the citizen cannot or the BWG cannot access. And uh, we have been literally begging at the doorsteps of CSR foundations and, uh, you know, giving them extremely detailed because uh, I've been in this sector and, uh, you know, represented and even our urban local body has been literally recommending us. But money is not, resources are not available. Uh, and, uh, you know, um, so the ultimate thing is that uh, there seems to be like, a, uh, I would say, uh, you know, the importance of the 73rd and 74th Amendment of the Constitution and the fact that they, it can actually uh, work for us. And there are citizens who have become now, like Dr. Johan also pointed out, very aware of the situation, very well uh, attuned to exactly what is their responsibility and how much needs to be done. And they know about uh, things like the finances, management, and all that. But uh, resources in terms of uh, funds is uh, not available, either to the uh, ULB or, uh, and I personally feel that uh, the corporate sector, uh, you know, which is really the one which is benefiting tremendously from 
urbanization in India, all that has been invested in building our cities, making them so good, making them so beneficial uh, for the corporates to thrive so much. Uh, you know, uh, if uh, they cannot be somehow roped into this, uh, really, honestly, I can't see where is the source because with uh, uh, barely 50% being, uh, uh, you know, of our revenue expenditure being earned through taxes and uh, all of it being utilized for almost salaries and things like that. Uh, you know, uh, both the ULB and the citizens are left completely without any, um, any resources, I would say, for, uh, you know, small capital, uh, you know, work, works that need to be uh, done. So, uh, you know, it is not enough uh, for the government to only um, say, insist on 2% of the, uh, you know, profit in three years to be utilized by the corporate, uh, you know, for uh, CSR. I would say that, uh, you know, um, you know, please, sir, like Mr. Unale, Dr. Johan, and all of you, you know, who have the wherewithal to really represent this to the government, that, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the corporates who are deriving the maximum benefit, maximum benefit from urbanization in India, uh, should really pay greater attention. Otherwise, uh, you know, uh, we may have, uh, you know, um, uh, spurts of brilliance here and there, but, uh, you know, we will really not be able to solve the actual uh, issues and, uh, you know, uh, go for quality of life and especially climate change, uh, which is going to really eat into our resources and destroy, you know, whatever we have done uh, till now. So I would also stop here uh, since uh, the, the speakers. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity and uh, really wonderful work, uh, Mr. Unale. And we look forward to, uh, you know, the final, yeah, and uh, uh, wonderful work. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, uh, Professor Shamila Mani. It was a pleasure listening to you. And uh, you've rightly pointed out and highlighted the 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 scarcity or the difficulties in accessing funds that are available and uh, there is an urgent need to look for external sources, tap alternate sources of funds uh, to fulfill the needs and requirements of, of today's times. Uh, with these uh, remarks, I would like to thank you. Uh, and I'm sure uh, Mr. Unhale would have something to say regarding the points raised by you towards the end of the program. But I would like to invite uh, Professor Mahalaya Chatterjee, uh, who teaches economics at uh, the University of Calcutta to get a perspective from her on, on the book uh, presented by Mr. Samir Unhale. Uh, Madam, over to you. Uh, thank you. Thanks to Impri and the panel for giving me a chance. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, this is a difficult day for me. I couldn't hear what, what Mr. Unhale has spoken and also by previous speakers. I am just here to give my impression on the book, what I could gather very quickly when I got the book uh, the, on the, the Thursday night. Hmm. Now, uh, Mr. Unhale has rightly said that uh, he has jotted down the points we generally discuss, uh, we generally talk about when we talk about municipal finance. So in that sense, it is a very, very, very important uh, addition to the municipal finance. But what I think about the book that uh, the book has 29 chapters, including the introductory one, uh, it has taken up the, so many issues, but let me just uh, categorize the issues and put it together. That is, it starts with the constitutional amendment. That is, uh, the as we all know, that the municipal finance was in a doldrum before the constitutional amendment. At least the constitutional amendment spoke for uh, the so-called uh, so-called state finance commissions, and it was thought uh, 30 years ago it was thought that it would solve the problem of municipal finance for smaller and larger uh, bodies and so and so. So uh, I would like to say that that the uh, the first thing he takes up the 74th constitutional amendment, which is a watershed as far as 
uh, urban local bodies are concerned. Then uh, in chapter seven, it talks about the finance commission and municipal finance. And also uh, in uh, two other chapters, it talked about urban budget and also the local government and other things. Hmm. Then the main issues, if I just uh, took it, uh, try to make them under sub subheadings, uh, one is the first is the issue of public finance. Municipal finance is a part of public finance, but more important because municipal finance, municipalities or uh, urban local bodies have to do, walk into the uh, grassroots level so that uh, so that uh, there are two chapters. One is on taxation, another is on budget, and the third one is on budget of the city level agencies. Hmm. City level agencies. That is, uh, that is one can say that uh, this issue. Takes, joins the issue of broader issue of public finance, that is what is happening in the upper levels and how it transcends to the municipal level, to the town level or city level, that is there. Then the third important issue that is present in this book, uh, which is about accounting and municipal finance. We all know that uh, there was a change, there was a transformation and others as far as municipal finance is concerned. It took about uh, double entry accounting based municipal budget, which was not that before. Before that, municipal accounting was single entry. A uh, single entry, and it was no different from what you find in the Grosser's, uh, uh, Grosser's book and others. So this was a really, a, uh, uh, I should say, a big change as far as as far as municipal accounting system is concerned and the municipal budget after that, that is also being placed you know, as a part of uh, double entry accounting. When there was the concern of capacity building and others, as we know, I can talk about West Bengal. Uh, when I did my surveys for my PhD in late 80s and others, most of the municipalities in Kolkata metropolitan area, they didn't have a full-fledged accountant, a permanent accountant. Most of the accountants and also engineers were in deputation from other departments of the state government. So this is this is in the this is in the new millennium, the new type of uh, double entry accounting and others. Then the municipal municipal finance accounting system that has emerged as a separate uh, separate system from other type of uh, bodies corporate bodies and others, municipalities are different because they are not profit earning bodies. So their accounting system should be different and so and so. So it also links with the audits, audit uh, features and others. Then the fourth issue that is being taken up in the book is the financing option. Financing options uh, and uh, very rightly, the ninth chapter and 13th chapter, uh, they can be linked together in a sense that the ninth chapter talks about the loans and others, and the 13th chapter is about credit ratings and others. Hmm. Credit ratings, which leads to the uh, the issue of whether the urban local bodies are eligible for loans and how much loan can be available. Then the bond market, hmm. bond market and others, development finance institutions, land as a means of uh, financing. Then uh, with the once upon a time when we were students, we called about joint sector. Now it is called the PPP model, the pub, uh, public private partnership that is also being dealt in the 17th chapter. Then the user char charges, how can it be charged? What are the issues with user charges and others and so and so. And finally, foreign funding, whether foreign funding in, uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in terms of loans or any other uh, things can be available for the urban local bodies directly and so and so. Then, then the fifth issue which has become very important is the economy and the economy municipal finance interface. Uh, there is one chapter on city economy, one is the, the another chapter on ACZ that if there are ACZs, uh, how it would affect the city economy and then the financial viability of the cities. All of them has become important because now there is an issue um, which is somehow missing in this book. Uh, I should come to it later on. That is, uh, so has, uh, this book is more in the experience in Maharashtra and so and so. But uh, there is an issue in the international level that whether metropolises, metropolises, they should be granted the uh, a bigger role. Metropolises can be treated as uh, separate states. 
uh, out of the so-called state system. Uh, if that is the case, if, it, if that is the case, then what is the financial viability of the cities? The economic condition of the cities that in in turn that uh, signifies that what is the state of the city economy that would be what would be the state of the uh, financial viability or financial condition of the ULBs. So this issue is also very important and that has been dealt in things. Then uh, then the sixth one I would like to look at in this way that union government and municipal finance. That is the, the so-called union government, the projects or missions of the union governments and how that is affecting the uh, the uh, uh, financing condition of the urban local bodies, the smart cities, the SPVs, then the urban missions, and thirdly, the conditionalities of urban missions, how they can be, uh, how they can uh, help or can, cannot help the so-called urban local bodies, how the SPVs, how the SPVs are affecting the basic spirit of the 74th constitutional amendment, uh, that is also a very big issue uh, if you think of smart cities and other missions. Then the to some topical issues are dealt with. One is the climate change, SDG, and the role of the things. Now, this is this is very important because, because uh, urban local bodies are part of the whole part of the whole. So what it cannot go against what is happening in the whole, uh, but it has to. It has to do in its own way uh, for uh, climate change, its mitigation, and reaching the SDGs. Mm. So this uh, uh, this is in and out of, of the whole perspective, uh, the joining and disjoint with the uh, with the whole one and the municipalities that has been dealt in a very good way. Then the pandemic lessons. Of course, we have seen that in the pan the pandemic, we are not ready for that. Uh, none of the our ULBs were ready for that, but they were. They had to uh, carry on a lot of thing, a lot of thing during the pandemic. Hmm. Uh, pandemic. So pandemic has taught us uh, about the readiness, uh, readiness of, with not only this type of pandemic, but any type of disaster, uh, be it uh, be it climatic, be it other things. That what are the basic requisites of the things. Then the capacity building issues like the manpower issues and finally the politics and economics of uh, urban local bodies or municipalities. That is the uh, moral hazard, the ethical dilemmas and others. Now when uh, I have a point here, when Mr. Runhale talks about the political economy, the first line is about corruption. We all know, we all know that uh, corruption is an issue, is an issue. But there are other aspects of political economy also. Uh, that is with the 30% reservation and others. The composition of the so-called ULBs, uh, the so-called councillors or commissioners of the ULBs, how they are elected, uh, how they are elected, the 30% reservation for women, and then the reservation of uh, for the uh, for the uh, for the backward caste and others. How they are changing the so-called composition of the ULBs and how that is affecting the whole financial system and the uh, and the so called allocation allocation priorities and etc uh, so this is this is my work on the book uh, now as uh, i have a suggestion to impre that is uh, mr unhale has taken up uh, has written this book on the experience of his maharashtra experience now why don't impre take up the issue with some other states especially with the states where there the, there are metropolitan cities hmm. metropolitan cities and not with metropolitan cities there should be pick and choose with that uh, that is uh, uh, that is say maharashtra and gujarat taken together uh, maharashtra is sometimes overshadowed by mumbai whereas gujarat an equally urbanized state but doesn't have any met in so called metropolitan area which can be compared to mumbai hmm. so why well, why impre doesn't take up some type of uh, comparative studies between this type of states hmm. this type of state that would enhance our understanding of the issue of municipal finance the old issues the municipality is suffering from dark of money the success and failure of constitution amendments especially the state finance commission uh, commissions their roles and others Mm. The state finance commission versus the SPVs in the smart cities, mm. the mission missions, the uh, the conditionalities which is aptly talked about. Uh, now 
this should enhance our understanding our understanding of municipal finance which is absolutely required and absolutely required uh, in this point of time where as professor samla mani has said that uh, the so called uh, we are uh, there is time that we are going to reach 50% urbanization in say next one decade so this is my uh, this is my short review of the book uh, what i have seen again i'm extremely sorry that i could not uh, uh, stay here for the whole time uh, and thank you impri and thank you others for giving me that chance thank you very much professor chatterjee yeah, i think it wasn't a short review it was a very detailed review and authors benefit greatly from such reviews so the the precision and the kind of information you reflected on each and every aspect uh, would be of great interest to to the author thanks a lot once again for your time and for participating in the program uh, may i request uh, uh, dr somya deep chatopadhyay uh, who teaches economics at vishwa bharati university in shanti niketan to uh, please uh, share his views on the uh, on the book sir somya deep sir is not uh, able to connect because he is in north bengal some internet issues some internet issues yeah yeah so okay you can go to your remarks or samir sir's remarks which oh, i would like to yeah give the floor to mr samir unale because uh, the book is uh, from his side and he he got a lot of perspectives uh, from uh, from persons having varied backgrounds and experiences and i'm sure he would like to reflect on some of the points shared over to you yes. mr unale yeah yeah thank you rumi sir and uh, thank you very much uh, to uh, dr chavan ma'am uh, professor chatterjee ma'am professor shamla mani ma'am for uh, uh, their insights they were greatly helpful and i'm sure that uh, maybe it can be uh, developed further uh, and the suggestion especially of having more such uh, Uh, comparative studies between uh, various states i think would be a very good uh, way forward because uh, we are in the phase of almost uh, hyper localization where we have uh, many you uh, know uh, regional variations happening and uh, now we do have the data says the granular data the processing abilities to you know uh, reach uh, reach and uh, deep dive into the regional variations i think that was a very good suggestion uh, and uh, greatly uh, helped you know into the insights by all the uh, three very respected uh, uh, elderly uh, you know to give us the ideas how could move ahead as i said you know this was a <clears throat> uh 10% of what one would have like to do and i think the uh, suggestions on improvements are uh, very well taken and you know we hope to you know we can come up with a second version which is more developed especially the uh, operational efficiencies of the various municipal services that are given it will be solid waste uh, water supply cv treatment street lighting and other broader services which are given by the municipalities and the uh, if they in the parlance of private sector are treated as you know independent uh, uh, income and expenditure balance sheets are prepared for these services uh it like a fish chips mark just a better idea for us you know, as to how to dwell uh, further into these uh, uh, these uh, uh, suggestions that have been made uh, i think uh, there were also uh, two comments uh, actually made by uh, one was by mamta jain ji uh, on uh, the bangalore model of uh, decentralized and its financing and one was regarding the green credit program and other was by uh, mr manush rath regarding the uh, the actually the efficiencies of uh, uh, municipal functioning and also the how could with ngos being a part of it and uh, whether the budgets and taxes and high salary bills actually that the municipalities are given uh, obviously they as rightly said by uh, manush ji uh, that they require greater uh, greater uh, deliberations and maybe deeper insights by uh, more studies into that and i hope that the 
uh, the various mission funds are available. Uh, some part of that should be made. In fact, I had uh, suggested that earlier that the research projects um, by think tanks, by academic institutions need to be encouraged into uh, these issues, you know, which otherwise are uh, not uh, really looked into. And we could uh, take help of various academic institutions by maybe supporting them in the mission fund itself, because the mission fund for urban itself is of 8 trillion rupees, 8 lakh crore for the five years. And I'm sure that even the 1% of the uh, information and education and communication budget, which is normally given to every such missions, could also be used for the research projects by various academic institutions and uh, think tanks. And I think it will greatly help uh, any clause, just not municipal finance or this, uh, the topic that we discussed here, but any uh, many such more topics uh, which require uh, such uh, investigations and support. Uh, regarding the uh, uh, Mamta Jain's uh, uh, question on the decentralizing de uh, of the water, water treatment uh, project and its financing, I think the Bangalore model is being uh, acknowledged by the ministry, by the CPHO, uh, and the CPHO as one of the models that can be replicated. And uh, I believe the technology and the ONM part, uh, the manpower of you know, maintaining uh, such a project and skilling them, uh, if that's done, I'm sure that people would be uh, more than willing, especially the smaller towns or the Nagar Panchayat or the transitory urban areas would be benefited by the, any decentralized uh, new technologies that are coming up. I'm also in. The, I think the, I had read also recently that uh, Camus uh, technology is also being you know uh, acknowledged. So uh, we will have to move for you know uh, such smaller uh, such smaller uh, activities. Uh, uh, more you know like of a, uh, various options uh, need to be made available to the citizens, uh, the cities, and also the empowering and enabling uh, ecosystem for that also need to be ready, you know, so it would be uh, really easy to uh, adopt such newer technologies. Uh, regarding grid credit program, I think it, I am not, uh, it has not been adequately dealt in the book. It was uh, maybe cursorily mentioned, but this newer models of uh, financing, uh, I felt there was uh, more noise and less actual delivery to cities. I mean, I don't know of major cities or any, until now at least, you know, getting who have been benefited uh, by such programs. Maybe uh, there is still, you know, uh, effort needs to be done by, for bridging uh, these funds to actually reach the, the, the municipalities and maybe some more work uh, needs to be done on that. Uh, so generally, I think the ideas were great and I hope to incorporate, but incorporate them and probably get the detailing which is required uh, also in the next version, probably, uh, hopefully, uh, there's a piece, sufficient piece of mind to <laughs> go into that. And uh, secondly, of course, the, uh, the purpose was, you know, to put the municipal perspective and uh, the questions, uh, more questions, actually, this topic uh, had to be highlighted also even within the municipal uh, uh, framework of the various systems you know that 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 uh, work in the urban spaces uh, also need to you know come together and uh, like uh, right ma'am said regarding the metropolitan areas and then it was a very good suggestion that we at least have now uh, many such metropolitan regions in the country and uh, the various agencies like the municipality, the smart city, the development authority, maybe the DISCOM, the electricity supply, the water utilities, and such uh, various uh, organizations can come together by uh, making the Metropolitan Planning Committee more active and the financial component of the planning part. Very often the planning in urban context is taken as the land use planning. But it is a one part of it. Other is, of course, the resource planning also, like the financial planning. That also, you know, needs to be uh, properly acknowledged and uh, therefore given a, a proper uh, a framework by which it can be uh, implemented in the municipal level. So financial planning can be uh, uh, rep and financial reporting, uh, sharing of projects with the new digital uh, tools that are being made available. I think there shouldn't be uh, much of the problems for you know getting. Uh, the sharing of information and data and communicating amongst various uh, uh, people. So I think uh, uh, the uh, ideas which were shared were really uh, helpful. Uh, it did uh, help clear many of the my own doubts, which you know, which I had 
I still continue to have many, uh, actually. And uh, I hope that uh, this is just a trigger and uh, with the hope that many such, you know, practitioners maybe who are still working and many other people would, you know, uh, contribute and uh, work upon this uh, concept and uh, this, you know, idea of municipal finance or city financing because uh, all said and done, uh, cities are going to be funding capacity building and participation will be the triad uh, which is going to make uh, or break uh, the cities and uh, sometimes a bit scary to imagine how would be how will be our cities in say 2040 maybe 20 years since and now therefore we have to you know anticipate those ideas and start executing now with that speed and therefore uh, getting all the acts together all the agencies together all the you know the efficiencies and resource allocations, financial resources, manpower resources uh, is going to be uh, extremely crucial. You know, otherwise, otherwise, we will be missing the bus, and the challenges staring at us uh, might overpower us. So uh, that's briefly. Uh, I'm still trying to you know understand, recollect what uh, very important inputs were made. So I'm really again grateful for all the remarks made by the. Uh, three scholars and also uh, the two participants, you know, who uh, uh, enriched my understanding. Uh, so, Rumiji, I think uh, I was more listening and, you know, trying to understand rather than immediately respond. So, thanks a lot for all the time, you know, which was given for this book. Yeah, thank you very much. And I hope to probably uh, dwell upon that uh, uh, tonight <laughs> immediately. So, yes. thank, thanks, thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ronale. I think uh, through this uh, exercise, I look at it as an exercise and also you may be looking at it in the same manner. Through this exercise of uh, holding a discussion on your book, you entered a, a zone uh, in which you experienced many new things. And uh, like, uh, like us researchers, we write on a variety of topics and after reaching a certain point of time, we realize that uh, this needs to be investigated or improved further. So you have entered into that zone and uh, I would encourage uh, you to continue with this good work, uh, to, to improvise on the work that you've already done. And I'm sure once this book is published, it, it will be received very well. It's a forward looking book. It gives many ideas of how municipalities should be in future, what are the things that need to be taken into consideration? So from that point of view, it's 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 an excellent work at this stage and you may like to polish it further as you proceed forward. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the distinguished panel of speakers, Dr. Purnima Chauhan, uh, Professor Shamla Mani uh, and uh, Professor Mahalaya Chatterjee. It was a pleasure listening to you, the kind of perspectives that you brought uh, were very interesting. I learned a lot and I'm sure the author would have also learned many new things. Uh, and uh, I have, uh, after listening to various perspectives and opinions, uh, I, I would like to conclude by saying that uh, there are two types, I, I think there are two types of municipalities in India. One, which are in a better position uh, as compared to others. Uh, so the better ones uh, would need to work harder on, on uh, identifying the, the, the innovations, uh, developing innovations to, to, to be in a better position to serve the citizens. Uh, and the, the ones which are not in a good position, those municipalities need to be handholded for several more years by the higher levels of government in terms of uh, improving their capabilities through training, uh, devolving greater funds, making funds easily available and bringing them up to a certain level wherein they can uh, function in a self-sustainable manner. Uh, so uh, with these uh, remarks, I would like to uh, conclude from my side and hand over the uh, the platform to Rehmat. Uh, Rehmat, you may like to thank the uh, panel of speakers. Over to you. As we come to an end of today's discussion, I, Rehmat Arora, 
researcher at IMPRI, Impact and Policy Research Institute, would like to propose a formal vote of thanks. On behalf of hashtag IMPRI Center for Habitat, Urban and Regional Studies, CHURS, I would like to thank all of you for attending today's deliberation. A book discussion on singularities of municipal finance, hashtag city reflection, authored by Mr. Samir on Haleji and published by Impre Books. Congratulations again, sir. We are grateful to our chair for the session, Dr. Rumi Ajazji, our esteemed panelists, Professor Mahalia Chatterjee, Dr. Poonima Chahanji, Dr. Somyadeep Chadupadhyay ji, and Professor uh, Shamala Mani ji for taking part in the discussion and enlightening us. Lastly, we would like to thank and congratulate Mr. Samir Onhale ji for his book and leading today's deliberation. We are grateful if you're watching us later on on our YouTube channel or listening to us on our various podcasts or reading our publication. We thank all of our participants who have raised pertinent questions and actively participated in today's deliberation. You may also find more book discussions and thematic events under IMPRI web policy talk series. We hope you continue to join in the future to our IMPRI web policy talk and web policy learning. Wishing you a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Rumi. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.